Hey everybody, thanks for checking out History X. I wanted to take some time to talk about the plane crash that happened this past Saturday. Uh, spending some time at the Commemorative Air Force uh, on Saturday, that's when I heard about the crash. The TBM Avenger that went into the water, and I've got some video here. It was pretty, pretty spectacular. The um, video, you know, not only because of the video that was captured, as you can see here, the plane, um, almost a perfect water landing. The pilot flared at the last minute. It brought it to a near stall and, um, you know, basically came out unharmed. Um, now you can see in the water landing, and I'm going to hit pause if I can, because, you know, you can see that uh, obviously there's damage. The propellers are bent. The engine's got to be trashed. And we're going to get into more of the structural damage in a moment, because there's a lot of discussion about whether or not this plane is going to be restored. Can it even be restored? So we're going to we're going to touch on that a little bit. Uh, looking at some of the pictures. This is what the plane looked like sitting on the runway. If you're not familiar with the TBM Avenger, it's a torpedo bomber and it's got this uh, a portion underneath where a torpedo is stored for an attack. So it's a pretty bulky airplane, but it was also a very effective airplane during World War II. Right now, as I understand it, there's about 39 of these that are flyable around the world, not just in the uh, United States, but around the world. So there aren't very many of them. And that kind of that's kind of what makes a plane like this very special. So when I heard about this one landing in the water, crashing, and it kind of, um, you know, at a museum like the Commemorative Air Force, everyone kind of takes a collective breath, you know, kind of holding their breath and hoping not only hoping that everyone's okay, but what does this mean for aviation, you know, for these amazing World War II planes that are still surviving, that a lot of people put a lot of work into, their heart and soul into, to make sure that they remain flying and that people can enjoy them to this day. Well, when a plane, when an accident like this happens, obviously there's an investigation. And so it remains, remains to be seen what the uh, National Transportation and Safety Board determines. But, you know, when you look at a plane like this, this uh, TBM Avenger was restored, took about 13 years to restore this plane. It was brought back to flying condition about a year ago. So it hasn't been flying very long and ran into engine trouble. And fortunately, this pilot had the skills that he had. You can see in this picture, like I said a few moments ago, a perfect water landing. Uh, he he's definitely pulling back. He flared, and obviously the impact you can see here in the picture bent propeller. Um, the engine's going to be obviously trashed, and this is what happened next. So when the plane crashed on Saturday, it had to spend the night basically on the beach the waves pounding on it. Uh, obviously it's uh, impacting with the sand. So there's going to be some damage there. And they thought they came up with a plan. They thought they had the idea of attaching airbags to it, and then they could float it down the Florida intercoastal waterway to get it back to the Valiant uh, Military Aviation Museum. That was the museum that operated this plane. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the Coast Guard and I believe the Army Corps of Engineers basically said, no, we're not going to allow you to do that. Uh, we're going to, we want you to play, we're actually going to demand that you remove the plane from where it sits for environmental reasons, probably for navigational reasons, in case all of a sudden this plane broke loose from the airbags and sunk in the intercoastal channel. That would be a navigation nightmare. So, they uh, basically said no to that plan and wanted the plane dragged up onto the beach. So here is a picture of the plane on the beach. And this is a uh, video 
of what that looked like. Now, I've actually, you know, there are so many videos of this on YouTube right now. What they did, and I'm going to hit pause. What they did was they brought a crane to the beach and because the crane was so heavy, it couldn't actually go right onto the sand and lift the plane vertically. So they had to drag it out of the water. They did it very slowly as part of an effort to make sure that they weren't damaging the plane. And in these videos, I've sped the videos up four times by 400% to show you, you know, that the plane is moving and you can see you know, here they're dragging it out of the water. They're doing it very slowly, trying to uh, minimize the damage. So you can see the plane after I've sped up the video, the plane is moving, but obviously that kind of friction against the sand, it's gonna create some damage. So when they finally lifted the plane out of the water, this is what they found. They, well, it's, it's basically a wreck. So hanging in the air, you can see from this view that there's definitely damage to the control surfaces, to the ailerons, to the elevator. Uh, we already talked about damage to the propellers and the engine, but take a look at the damage to the fuselage underneath. The um, storage area for the torpedo totally ripped apart. Here's a great view lit up showing the uh, just the damage underneath. And what's visible to the naked eye is pretty, um, pretty saddening. But also consider that there could be uh, irreparable, irreparable damage to the structural components, to any kind of um, spars inside, ribs inside the plane that have been bent. Remember, it took 13 years to restore this plane to flying condition. And well, Let's hope not, but it could take another 13 years to fix this plane. And because there's only 39 of these planes uh, flying in the world, there are, I think, maybe another 45 that are in static condition, meaning that they're either in storage or they're on display, but they can't be flown. That could be an option for this plane, uh, restore it to static display condition. So, um, that remains to be seen. They were able to fold the wings back and lower the plane onto a trailer. And so obviously they're gonna transport it back to, I believe the Valiant Aviation Museum. But remember, there's probably gonna be an investigation from that National Transportation and Safety Board. Um, so that has to happen. Um, there's a couple of thoughts. Some people have said, well, with this plane being exposed to salt water, it's done for. Well, that's ridiculous. You know, the, uh, the TBM Avenger was meant to be a plane that flew over the ocean. So it, it was designed to be very resistant to salt water. And when you restore a plane like you are obviously priming thing you can think of to protect it uh, from salt water. So I don't really think the fact that it landed in salt water, spent 24, 48 hours in salt water is really going to determine whether or not this plane can be restored. There's plenty of other things to think about. Another thing I want to talk about is the, the skill that this pilot showed in basically bringing this plane to the, uh, to the water. A lot of people, a lot of people are saying that he put the beachgoers in jeopardy, in danger. Well, looking at the skill that he displayed in bringing this plane down, I don't think that's the case at all. Obviously, no one was hurt. He, he kept the plane away from the people. Um, he eventually did have to put it down. So yeah, he came close to people. But think about it from this perspective. If he went way out into the ocean, now the environmentalists would be complaining. The plane would have sunk. That gasoline would have basically floated into the water and it would have been an environmental nightmare. So this pilot, and I wish I knew what his name was. I've tried to determine what this pilot's name was. Either they haven't released it or I just can't find it. If you know the pilot's name, I would love to hear it because personally, I think this guy is a hero. If not a hero,
incredible skill in bringing this plane down safely. And he walked away with no injuries. So I think that whole uh, level of skill that he displayed is amazing. Um, there's more to be learned about this uh, incident. Obviously, there's probably going to be an investigation. And if I learn more or if you learn more, please put it in the comments. I think one of the things I'd like to do is uh, talk to some of the mechanics um, at uh, talk to some of the uh, mechanics and pilots here at the commemorative Air Force just to see what their opinions are on what the next steps would be for this plane. I really appreciate you checking out History X. Thanks for viewing. And if you guys have any questions about uh, what I've been talking to, uh, what I've been talking about here tonight, please put your questions in the comments section. If I can't answer them, maybe someone else that's watching can. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for checking out History X, and I hope you have a great evening.